Which of the following is an accurate statement? A. A vector cannot have a magnitude of zero if one of its components is not zero. B. The magnitude of a vector can be equal to less than the magnitude of one of its components. C. If the magnitude of vector A is less than the magnitude of vector B, then the x component of A must be less than the x component of B. The mag or D, the magnitude of a vector can be either positive or negative. So the best way to go through this problem is to go through each of the choices and determine whether it is true or false. So choice A says a vector cannot have a magnitude of zero if one of its components is not zero. So for part A, question A, it says that if it doesn't ha if one of its parts doesn't have a magnitude of zero, then the entire vector can't have a magnitude of zero. So if we have a vector pointing up in the y direction and say that its components read zero and five then one of its components is zero, but the magnitude of this vector here is five. If we now turned it on its side instead, and gave it the components of five and zero, it still would have a magnitude of five because the magnitude of it, as you know, if you set it off to an angle, would be the x component and the y component. So this magnitude here, say c, is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. If one of these is zero, it's simply c is equal to the square root of x squared, which is just x. And if x were zero, it would be c is equal to the square root of x squared, x squared is zero plus y squared, which is just simply c is equal to the square root of y squared, which is y. So showing here, c is equal to x, c is equal to y, if one of the other components is zero. Both of them are not c has some value. So here we've shown that a vector cannot have a magnitude of zero if one of its components is not zero. So a is true. It is an accurate statement. But just for help with the material, we're going to go through the rest of the choices now. So choice b states that the magnitude of a vector can be equal to less than the magnitude of one of its components. Okay, so let's say that we have a value of 1 and a value of 2 for the components, and this is our resultant here. So this is saying that the magnitude of vector can be equal to less than the magnitude of one of its components. So this is saying our c can be equal to 1.99, or c is equal to, say, 0.99. So just smaller than one of the components one of each of the components. So now we got to see if this is actually true. So to solve actually for the length of c, we would use the Pythagorean theorem. So we see c squared is equal to 2 squared plus 1 squared. Take the square root of both sides, we can solve for c. So we get c is equal to the square root of 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1 squared, which is 1, which is equal to the square root of 5. Now, the square root of 5, in fact, is equal to 2.23. So, shown here, c can't be, c is not equal to one of these values or less than them. So, therefore, b is wrong. c is equal to 2.23, which is greater than the y component and which is greater than the x component. So, here... B is not accurate. B is false. Choice C states, if the magnitude of a vector A is less than the magnitude of vector B, then the x component of A must be less than the x component of B. Well, the simplest way to prove this is to show, okay, so here we have the vector B, and here we have the vector A. Now vector B has absolutely no x component because they're just giving you any random vector B. Vector B can be directed in any possible orientation. So if it was directed completely straight up, so it had no horizontal component, if A 
has a magnitude less than it, but it does have some vertical component, then we shown here that A, even though having a smaller magnitude, can have a greater X component than the much larger magnitude of B, because B necessarily doesn't have to have an X component. It could be zero. A could have an X component of 0.1. That would still go against what this is saying here. So C is also not true. D states the magnitude of a vector can be either positive or negative. Well, when you take the magnitude of something, you're taking the absolute value. So the magnitude of negative 5 is 5, and the magnitude of 5 is 5. So in both of these cases, you're not just flipping the sign. You're just taking what the actual value is here. So the magnitude is 5. Think of when you apply a force to some object. If you apply a force of 25 newtons to the right, as you would remember from your algebra-based physics, you have a force of 25 newtons in that direction. If you were to apply a force instead of 25 newtons in the other direction, well, you would be moving in the other direction, but you're still applying the same magnitude, the same amount of force on this object, which is all you really care about for the situation. So here, the magnitude, otherwise the absolute value of a vector, can only be positive. You can't have a negative magnitude. So D is also not true. So once again, we go through our choices. We see that the only one that is true and is an accurate statement is A. A vector can have a magnitude of zero, cannot have a magnitude of zero, if one of its components is not zero.